Welcome back to the Anatomy Lab. This is a quick follow-up to my last video on hip flexion. In that video, I divided the flexion helper muscles into two groups to show how they can create different movements through their contractions. In the first group, I included the anterior fibers of the gluteus medius and minimus, the tensor fasciae latae and the sartorius. These muscles were meant to illustrate a combination of hip internal rotation and abduction. However, two knowledgeable viewers, Lucky Number 13 and Bachelor Pendula, pointed out a flaw in my explanation and they were right. They noted that the sartorius is actually an external rotator of the hip, not an internal rotator as I had stated. But to fully understand how this mistake came about, let's take a quick look at the functions of the sartorius. The sartorius is an important contributor to hip flexion. It assists the iliacus and the psoas muscles in lifting the thigh upwards. Additionally, the sartorius flexes the knee, allowing for bending of the leg at the knee joint. As pointed out in the comments, the sartorius is also an external rotator of the hip, meaning it helps rotating the thigh outward and not inward, but more about this in a second. It also acts as an abductor of the hip, which means it helps move the leg away from the body's midline. Now here comes the function that is the most important for this video. The sartorius rotates the lower leg medially, meaning it helps to turn the lower leg inward. And this is exactly why I made my mistake in my explanation of the helper muscles. The movement I chose was somewhat a special case and not as representative as it could have been. The sartorius only affects the medial rotation of the lower leg in this movement and isn't responsible for the internal rotation of the hip. So I should have been more thorough in my explanation or selected a less confusing movement. Anyways, thanks to everyone who shares their knowledge in the comments. Your input really helps me to make better animations. Mistakes will happen, but they are also great for learning, especially with complex topics like the human hip. I hope you've enjoyed this video and you'll see over time understanding complex anatomy will get easier and more intuitive. See you in the next one.